Exponential functions. That sounds tough, right? And if you see a function loaded up with exponents, it probably looks tough too. But remember, the basic SAT strategies don't change just because you have an exponent in the problem. Even if a problem looks tough, try to fall back on the strategies we've learned in this course. We're going to practice that in this lesson as we talk about exponential functions. Let's start by looking at a couple examples of exponential functions. We could see variables in the exponents, like f of x equals 4 to the x. Or we could see real numbers in the exponents. Either way, treat these like you treat any other function question. Let's look at that first example. If f of x equals 4 to the x, then what is f of 3? Just plug in 3 for x, so we have f of 3 equals 4 to the 3, and that equals 64. It's important to note that these functions aren't always going to be written with f and x. You might be used to seeing functions in terms of f of x, but the test can use other letters too, like p of w or s of r. It's all the same thing. Often the exponential functions on the SAT will be linked to some sort of real-world application. The question will tell you that the function determines manufacturing costs or food supplies or business targets or populations. Here's the thing. It doesn't matter what the function does, you still treat it the same way. Let's take a look at a question similar to what you might see on the SAT. After conducting an experiment on growing algae in a petri dish, a student concludes that the number of algae cells present can be determined by the formula C of D equals 2 to the D, where D represents the number of days since the experiment began, and C of D represents the number of algae cells in the petri dish. According to the student's formula, how many more cells are present on day D plus 1 than on day D? The answer choices are A, 2, B, D plus 1, C, 2 to the D, and D, 2 to the D plus 1. We'll start by underlining the facts and circling the key words. Now, how should we label the answer choices? We need to find how many more cells are present on day D plus 1 than on day D. That's a little too long. Let's label the answer choices how many more on D plus 1. Now, let's start by writing our formula down. We have a variable in the exponent, and we have variables in some of the answer choices. This sounds like a job for the picking number strategy. Let's say D equals 3. Remember, D stands for days. If we're comparing day D with day D plus 1, we can compare day 3 with day 3 plus 1, which means we're comparing day 3 to day 4. Now let's plug 3 into the formula. On day 3, there were 2 to the 3 algae cells. 2 to the 3 is 8, so on day 3, there were 8 cells. We need to compare day 3 to day 4, so let's keep going. We'll plug 4 into the formula. On day 4, there were 2 to the 4 algae cells. 2 to the 4 is 16, so on day 4, there were 16 cells. Okay, we did the work. We know there were 8 cells on day 3 and 16 cells on day 4. We want to find out how many more cells were present on day 4 than on day 3. That's easy. 16 minus 8, which is 8. So we know the correct answer has to equal 8 when we plug in D equals 3. Let's go to the answer choices. Right off the bat, we know 2 isn't equal to 8, so let's cross off answer choice A. Answer choice B becomes 3 plus 1. That equals 4, not 8. So cross off answer choice B. Only two options left. Let's take a look at C. 2 to the D becomes 2 to the 3, and that equals 8. And that's exactly what we're looking for. But before we pick C, let's quickly look at D. 2 to the D plus 1 becomes 2 to the 3 plus 1, or 2 to the 4. That equals 16, not 8. So answer choice C is clearly correct. Not bad. But now, let's put your knowledge to the test. Second round bonus question. How many algae cells were present when the experiment began? To answer this one, we need to go back to the question. We know that D represents the number of days since the experiment began. And if D equals 1, then one day has passed since the experiment began. If we want to know how many cells were present when the experiment began, we need to go back to a time when 0 days had passed, which means D equals 0. Now let's plug zero into our formula and see how many algae cells were present at the start of the experiment. So C of zero equals two to the zero, and two to the zero equals one. Remember, anything to the zero equals one. So there was one cell present when the experiment began. 
Good work. And that's how we work with exponential functions. It's not so bad, right? Do you know what will make these even easier? Yep, you guessed it, practice. So get to work. There are a bunch of questions in this course just waiting for you.